Hi everyone, welcome to our vodcast on ecological organization. What we're going to discuss in this vodcast are the different types of factors that you can find in an ecosystem, as well as the organization hierarchy ranging from a single organism all the way up to biosphere. So why don't we get started? Now, when you take a look at an ecosystem, such as a desert ecosystem as we have pictured here, uh, there's two main groups of factors that you have to be aware of. You have what are called biotic factors and you have abiotic factors. One way to remember the difference between the two is the term bio. Bio usually means living. These factors refer to what's living and what's non-living in an area. So biotic factors, by definition, are any living organisms found within an ecosystem. And these living organisms can include plants, animals, fungus, protists, and bacteria. So when we take a look at our picture here in the middle of our desert ecosystem, we're going to find several examples of biotic factors. Some of these examples include the birds up in the sky, the cacti that are found in the desert, the lizard down here in the left-hand corner, the spiders that are found underground, and then the desert fox catching a quick nap in the desert heat. So those are our biotic factors, all the living things. Biotic factors are the living things, then all you have to remember is that abiotic factors are the non-living things. You have to remember there is a difference between non-living and dead. Non-living things are things that never once lived in their existence, while dead things were once living, so were once biotic, and then have died since. By definition, an abiotic factor is any non-living factor that is found within the ecosystem. So it's pretty simple to remember. It's just the opposite of biotic factors. And examples include the sunlight that's coming through from the sun, the air that's surrounding the animals here because the atmosphere touches the ground, the sand and the soil that's found within the area, the rock, as you can see here in the mountains, and also the water that's found up in the clouds and also could be bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, ponds in a different ecosystem. So those are our two main groups of factors here. So why don't we take a look at a picture of a African savanna and see some examples there. So this is the same picture that we had in our opening. So let's just quickly run through some biotic factors. Some biotic factors, living things that you can see here in this picture. You have the single elephant, then you have a group of zebra walking across, and then you have a group of gazelles that are also walking across the savanna grasslands. So those are the biotic animals, but remember you can have the same species of grasses, and then also we have species of trees as well, and trees are living things. These are some of the examples of the biotic factors found in an African savanna grassland. Now the abiotic factors are kind of easy to see too. One, there's sunlight outside, so the sunlight is an abiotic factor as we said. These guys are breathing oxygen, Air, again, is an abiotic factor. We have this watering hole or this mud pit here, so we have some water that's collected there. Water is an abiotic factor. And then you can see some of the rocks on the ground. All right, and those are abiotic factors too. So these are examples of biotic factors and abiotic factors in a real life example. So let's quickly go over the organization of an ecosystem. When you talk about the organization of an ecosystem, you go from a single organism all the way up to what's called the biosphere. All right, and these have certain definitions that we need to go by. So let's start this off. Now, in an ecological organization hierarchy, the base level of organization is an organism. And an organism is just any individual living thing that carries out life processes. So in short, an organism is just any living thing found in an ecosystem. Next, we come up to population. And if you take a look, our population is essentially a group of organisms of the same species living in an area. Population is essentially all the deer in this picture here. And then we have community. Community is where we have all of the populations or two or more populations of living organisms living in an area here. So in this picture, you can see a population of deer, a population of birds, a population of the same species of trees, a population of the same species of grass, and then it goes on and on and on with various other examples that would probably be living in this example here. So that makes up our community, all the populations in an area. And then next we have an ecosystem. An ecosystem is essentially all the biotic or living things and all the abiotic or non-living things found in an area that interact with one another. So if we take a look at our picture here, again, we have a population of deer, we have a population of rabbits, population of birds, 
and then as well grasses and trees and other plant life. So those are all the biotic factors in this picture. However, we also have abiotic factors such as the water in the sky in the clouds or the water in the pond here, the air, the sun, the soil, and the rocks. And then lastly, what we have left at the end is our biosphere. Our biosphere basically encompasses the earth but specifically it's the areas on earth's surface or the ground or otherwise known as the lithosphere the atmosphere or hydrosphere where living things exist so anywhere living things exist would be considered part of the biosphere so the land has living things the ocean has living things and they help make up the biosphere let's go back to our african savanna example and just take a look at the organization that we can see in there Okay, so here we are back at looking at this image, and we're going to start off with the lowest level of organization, which is an organism. So our prime example of a single organism would be the elephant here, because we only have one of them. So that would be an example of an organism. A single gazelle would be an organism, a single zebra would be an organism. So those are examples as well. But this one stands out because he's the only one. Now we'll talk about population. Populations, remember, are two or more of the same species living in an area. So as you can see, we have a population of zebra here, because we have more than two, and then we also have a population of gazelles. We also have populations of grasses and populations of trees of the same species. Those are examples of populations. Now as we move on to community, we take a look at all the different populations that are found in an area which make up the community. So here, again, all the trees, all the grasses, the populations of gazelles found down here, the populations of zebras found down there, they all make up this community. And the next level of organization is our ecosystem, which is all the living and non-living things in the picture. So again, the elephants, zebras, gazelles, grasses, trees, birds found in the area. Those are all living factors or biotic factors in this picture, while our abiotic factors as we talked about, the light, the air, the rocks, and the water found in here, this helps make up our savanna grassland ecosystem. And then lastly, since this is found on Earth and this is found on the land, this has become part of our biosphere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our vodcast for today on ecological organization. I hope that was simple enough, and I hope you found that helpful.